Yo, 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 what's goody, man? What's goody? Hey, man, let's get into this right now. Let's get into this right now. We got to talk about this right now. And you know what? I had a change of heart. I wanted you to make a video real quick to address this, man, and let y'all get my thoughts and shit like this one or whatever, and then, you know, get y'all thoughts on it. Get basically, you know, comment, do whatever. But um, this is uh, referring to uh, to give T.J. Watt a contract or not. And guess what? Right now, I say, nah, don't give T.J. Watt no contract. Trade him right now while you still can. And you know what? And if you can't, that's fine. You can hold him this year, 10 million franchise, and, and, and own the rights to him, and then trade him. Whatever you got to do. Because let's be real, man. I, hey, I love T.J. Great, great football player, but let's be real. You don't build your team around outside linebackers. You just don't. And I know he wants five years, $150 million extension, $100 million guaranteed. We all know that. But, again, $100 million guaranteed and a non-quarterback. And um, go back to 2019. Go back to that. Hey, TJ balled out. Balled out. Guess what? <laughs> Was a great player. Guess what? Did we win? Did we make the playoffs? No, because who was our quarterback? Duck Hodges and Mason Rudolph. He, who did we have? Ben, he don't touch the ball enough. He's not a game. Again, I'm not saying, again, he, he doesn't have the same opportunities to change a game as a quarterback does. A quarterback touches the ball every play on offense. He don't touch the ball every play on defense. Okay, and not only that, the loss of Bud Dupree, I like Alex Smith. To me, he could be like a Lamar Woodley clone here in a little bit. But what I'm saying is this. Again, when you don't have that threat like Bud Dupree on the other side, what do you think lines are going to do? They're going to slide all the protection. They're going to chip away at him to where like whatever because he's the only real threat. So basically, take him out of the game. So you're basically paying a hundred million dollars for a guy to get again when you only had that one dominant force on the side. That's why again, if you look go back to when we won the Super Bowls and stuff like that, whatever, go back to 2008. We had not just one Lamar Woodley. We had James Harrison, Debo. Again, you had two of them. You can't do nothing when you got both of them. And again, TJ, Bud, they kind of, they thrive off each other. They don't, Bud's gone now. Unless Alex Hosman takes a step up, which I think he can, but still. Just go back. Just go back. Just go back to those days. You know, like whatever. Even when you had uh, Joey Porter and Harrison. Or like a whatever. Even Carl Tagans. I mean, you got, again, you got to have that other dominant force. That's way, that way the offensive line can't just take away one. Okay, whatever. So again, but still, this is an opportunity. We've we've thrown so much draft capital away, and if you guys want to keep winning, like that, whatever, and still get your franchise guy, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. You build for the future. At the end of the day, I'm gonna be real with you, T.J. Watt. What what's he gonna be? How, how many more years is he technically gonna be elite if he avoids severe injury? What? Maybe four at the most. Four more years, so why not package him up and see if you can get a couple first round picks? Because if you can land that future franchise quarterback, all of a sudden now you're in the driver's seat to build and have a future for the next 15 years. So you sac so what do you want to do? Sacrifice four to gain 10 to 15. What, uh, that's what I'm doing, and it, it ain't no. And, and you know what? I ain't even thinking about it. There ain't no hesitation in this at all. Like I said, because at the end of the day. If he plays under this $10 million his last year in his contract at $10 million, if he gets hurt, if he struggles, now the Steelers don't even have the same leverage. To me, I would have already pulled the trigger. If somebody's willing to maybe work on a contract extension with him that Steelers aren't, trade him up now for this upcoming draft. I would still trade him now that way because you don't want that distraction. TJ's not a guy that's going to cause it, but let me tell you something. When, if I'm TJ and I don't get what I want, I'm not going to be happy coming to work. I mean, don't get me wrong. He's got a ball out. That way he can... That way he has a better chance of getting that guaranteed money that he's after and that he's looking for and he's seeking. Whatever. To solidify that. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying he won't play well. But again, he's not going to have no love for this franchise. And to me, that ultimately, that's going to be a negative. Whatever. So again, give him what he wants. Let a team that's willing to give that, more, that guaranteed money and guarantee more money let them work a contract extension with him and give us the first round picks and we'll just go work it that way and see what we can do. Yeah, it's going to hurt us on defense this year, but you know what? At the end of the day, you can always... I'm not saying that there's going to be another T.J. Watt, but there's always going to be great players coming out and you can constantly develop them. All right? That's, just, that's the way the world works. These guys are only going to be in the prime for so long. You've got to keep building anyway. 
that's the name of the game. You, they don't stay young forever. Okay, it's a young man's sport, man. It's a young man's game. But the one, the one position that you can sit there and have fits or whatever like that, that can play, and we've already seen proven in their 40s, that can last a, a long time, is the quarterback position. And that's the guy who's the, who touches the ball the most out of any position, offensive, defense, on the field, special teams, whatever, that's it. That's the guy you need to invest your money into. And if you get a great one on a rookie deal, you can build your team around it until you got to pay him. But still, right now, we're not even in a position, unless we tank this year and play bad, to even be in a position to draft a good quarterback. So that's my set. So if you can use this while the time is right, while he's at the top of his game, and why and where he's at, basically was a uh, basically was a defensive MVP. Everybody knows that. Last two years, he's been at least the top five, if not top three, best defensive player in football. To me, he was he's been the top. He's the top. That's my opinion. So, at the end of the day, Ben's at, like I said, and I'll say this. Five years ago, even five years ago, I say give him the money because Ben's got five more years. You put Ben at what, like at 30, whatever, it definitely 10 years ago, I say if we're, if we're good on quarterback for the next five, then I say, you know what, not nah, give this guy the money, whatever. But at this point, with all, we have no, I think we are, I mean, our draft, we are, I mean, our base, we miss. We basically sacrificed everything all draft with the Devin Bush trade, these constant giving up pick after pick. This is an opportunity to gain some of that back and get some picks and put some position without having to sacrifice having a losing season to get what we want. We got to get a real quarterback, man, our own quarterback. Not Deshaun Watson, not Aaron Rodgers, not Trashkins, not Rudolph. No. Draft our own guy like we did Ben and like we did Terry. And that's it. And this is the way to do it. This is the only way to do it. This is the leverage that we got. The Steelers, I think, see that too. And I think that I think that was their plan B. If TJ play hardball, as far as the guaranteed money is concerned, this they're a loyal franchise. They they all know they don't give money guaranteed money past the first year. But look, let me tell you something. They let Mike Mitchell play out a five year contract, and we all know Mike Mitchell's a straight up bum. So again, they, they again these other these other teams might guarantee more up front. But a lot of times you'll never see the whole, the rest of that money because again, if you slack in your performance, they're quick to cut you. The Steelers, just like as their coaches and their players, they they show more patience. You're a lot more likely to see the money, even if you do have a drop of performance compared to other teams getting ready to cut you. So again, you know what I mean? It's a catch twenty two with that. But I want to get my thoughts on that. And uh, tell me what you guys think. I guess we're gonna find out sooner or later, one way or the other, if he signs this contract, because I guess you know, the Steelers don't negotiate during the year or he's going to play that last year out on a ten, basically one-year $10 million deal. And then I guess if he does that, if they all of a sudden break the rules, and I mean, at that point, I I see the Steelers franchise tagging him and looking to move him because, then, you know, whatever, because he'll be a year older. I, I doubt that'll be less incentive for them to give him that big contract again because he's not getting any younger. He's going to get older and try to get that quarterback. So to me... Within this week, and this, this, and here's my prediction: if he doesn't sign this contract before before Sunday, he won't be with the Steelers. He won't be with, he won't be on the Steelers roster next year, one way or the other. All right, that's my prediction. Let me know what you guys think. All right, have a good day.